We segue into Kobe Bryant, the Laker guard, who joins us now on the program. What are you doing today? Just, uh, just riding right now on the beautiful 405 on my way into practice. Uh, what are we driving? Uh, Range Rover. What are you listening to? Uh, right now, I'm not listening to anything because I'm talking to the lovely Dan Patrick. Well, there you go. So you're kind of interrupting my, my hip-hop music. Oh, okay. So what would what would you be listening to? I'd probably be listening to uh, Jay-Z, Magna Carta. Did you think that Jay-Z was going to be able to recruit people when he was with the Nets? Did did, did any players talk about, because Jay-Z was part owner, that, that people would go to the Nets? No, I mean, I think I – think, you know, Jay's really been, um, you know, he's extremely ambitious. So, you know, whatever he's kind of puts his mind to to be able to accomplish, um, you know, he has a knack of accomplishing those things. So I, I, I didn't doubt it for one second. He ever recruit, try to recruit you? No. Would you have gone there if you had the opportunity? Um, man, probably not. I mean, I, I like having my situation solidified as it is. And I'm comfortable with the team that I've assembled. It took me a long, a long time to assemble the team, so I'm pretty comfortable in my situation. If the Lakers were competitive right now, let's say one of the top four seeds in the West, would you be able to play? Um, yeah, probably. Probably. I mean, I, you know, even when I when I was injured, um, you know, I, I, I finished out the um, I finished out the game. And uh, even though sure, I still finished playing the game. So you know, if this was like a playoff situation, I'd, I'd play through it. I'd have to deal with it heavily in the offseason, um, you know, but I'd be able to manage it. What, what's the uh, prognosis, though, that, you know, I don't know. What Kobe Bryant do we see in your mind next year? Uh, I, well, it, I personally think you're going to see the same old Kobe that you're used to seeing. You know, the Kobe that was present there after the All-Star break, you know, last season. Um you know, I've I've never had, you know, a, a year with, you know, this much time off to recover and rest and, you know, to get stronger. How tough must you be around when you can't play basketball? <laughs> you know, it's, it's not only that. It's, it's, you know, when your team is really taking a nosedive. I mean, that, that really, really, you know, puts me on edge pretty much all day long. When you first heard that Phil could – that he wasn't going to be part of the Lakers, but then you heard that he was going to take over the Knicks. What was your initial reaction to that? Um, no, I mean, I wasn't surprised by it. I mean, I, I already pretty much known, um, you know, that was going to happen. You know, he and I had a great opportunity to catch up and get some breakfast together, and, you know, just kind of talk and just, uh, you know, just kind of catch up. And, you know, you mentioned that that was um, – you know, likely to happen, and uh, you know, I just wish him all the best. And like I said, I mean, there's only but so much meditation a person could do. All day. <laughs> you know, what I mean, at some point you gotta, you know, you gotta get up and do something. <laughs> when when was the breakfast when he told you this? Uh, we probably had breakfast about all oh, a week and a half ago, probably. But you know, I and I mentioned this that that you get to a certain age where. You still want to be relevant, and as you said, you can't be out there, you know, in your TP or you know, being uh, studying Zen here. That he w- he wants to be relevant. He he still has goals, but to run a team as opposed to coaching a team. If you're a free agent because Phil's in the front office, is that any different than Phil coaching you? Well, yeah, but you know, I just think the you know his mentorship shifts. You know, I think it goes from you know, having a direct influence on the players themselves to, you know, have the direct influence on the coaches staff, which he's, you know, accustomed to doing because that's how he coached as well. He he, he really had a great rapport with his coaches staff and it was really a great mentor for them. Um, and I'm sure he'll do the same thing. And it'll just kind of trickle down um, from there. It's not really no different than what, you know, Pat has been able to do in Miami with, uh, with Spolstra. He's a Kobe Bryant, Lakers guard, joining us, Dan Patrick show. But to get Carmelo at 30 or turning 30, can you change somebody in how they play at that age? I'm not. I'm trying to figure out when 30 became old. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out when that, when did that happen. I mean, I, you know, I thought 30, 32, I mean, those are, you know, prime years. But you were I, I 12 in. I've you- never really... You you were twelve years into your career by then. You come in at eighteen. Melo came in at what nineteen. A lot of play. I mean, you're you're sort of set in who you are, your personality, and your role on a team. 
So, well, I mean, your Melo's not old is, at thirty, but he's still been doing this for a long time. Yeah, but I mean, we're, we're, let's not confuse personality with, um, you know, having a greater understanding of the game. Right? I mean, there's a big difference. So, you know, players, we want to continue to to learn the game and learn how to play the game at a higher level. It's no different than. You know, than anything else, you want to continue to study to expand your knowledge. And, you know, Phil will be able to provide that knowledge. And, um, you know, he'll learn more about the game and open up dimensions of the game that he never um, that he never saw before. So, you know, it will just continue to improve. But can he change – can Melo be a guy who defers to somebody else as opposed to being the, the number one option in the start? I mean, he won a championship in Syracuse, so I mean, he's won a championship before. He's been a part of a championship roster, so you know, he has that championship DNA inside of him. So, you know, I think a lot of times what happens is people get wrapped up in the momentum of you know the categorization of a player, and you know they start running with it, and all of a sudden that's what he's labeled as, um, which is fine. It's just a challenge for him to respond to, but he's won a championship before. So, did you make a last pitch, last ditched effort to tell Phil? To uh, you know that you were gonna try to still keep him with the Laker organization? No, nah, I mean I, it's not. You know, I, from my understanding, they didn't. They never had that dialogue. Um, you know, since last season. So, you know, I wasn't. You know, obviously, if there was some interest there, you know, I'm sure our organization would have reached out and had those conversations with them. It was more so just a friendly. Uh, you know, just kind of a friendly breakfast and just catch it up on things. Yeah, but it's so. I I never understood that. If I I'm talking to Phil over the weekend. And he assumes he's getting the job offer on Monday, and then you call him and say, "Not, not only did you not get it, we hired Mike D'Antoni." And I, I mean, I, I was like, "How do you say no? No matter what egos or whatever else goes on politics, I just said no to the greatest NBA coach of all time." Like, I, I, I don't, I don't understand that. Yeah, I, nah, I man. Listen, I, I mean, I made two of us. I don't really understand it much either. But, um, you know, I think. You know, the, what we can do as players is just trust the organization. And I've had conversations with Jimmy, and Jimmy's really adamant about um, you know, the direction that he wants to go with his organization, and he feels really confident in the fact that he could be able to turn it around. And um, you know, him and Jeannie seem to be really focused on being on the same page, getting on the same page, and you know, pushing his organization and to having the same legacy that their father was able to uh, um, was able to maintain for so many years. Yeah, I don't know. I just uh, but it's hard. I mean, it's hard, right? I mean, it's hard to really see that when when you're in this type of situation where things are really, you know, seem um, yeah, you know, the future seems really bleak, man. It's it's really tough to have that faith and that and that trust. But that's what you have to have. And I've been with this organization since I was 17 years old. And I've known Jimmy. I've known Jeannie, and I know that I mean they bleed purple and girl gold, man. And they want to do the right thing for the organization. And when you have people that are that passionate about it, um, just like, you know, you are, um, you know, it's really just about communication and moving forward in the same direction. And I have no doubt that that will happen. Has, has Mike D'Antoni earned another year? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it, it's really, you know, it's been, it's been tough on him. You know, he, he, two years that he's been here, I mean, he's been dealing with so many injuries left and right. It's uh you know, he, he's got a, yeah, he hasn't really gotten a fair deal, um, you know, fair, fair shake at it since he's been here. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he's going to get another shot there, but uh, I know it's a delicate topic there for you. I did notice this, too, and, and I like when athletes get involved in, in causes, you know, but growing up and seeing these guys in the 60s who weren't afraid to be involved in politics, whether it was Ali or Jim Brown or Lou Alcindor. Mm-hmm. And then I saw where you involved with the White House. So... Mm-hmm. Uh, that be nervous about getting involved, where people are all of a sudden going to say, you know, let me let me criticize you for you know what you stand for, or you know, putting yourself oh, out yeah, there. Because uh, you know, yeah, because you know, I've never faced criticism <laughs> before. <laughs> <laughs> but how'd you get involved in this with the White House? Well, I mean, listen, it's a great cause, and there's something that you know, particularly for athletes, um, is is an extremely important thing for us to be a part of because we need health care. I mean, injuries are part of the game, right? Whether it's football, basketball, you know, soccer, whatever the sport may be, injuries are part of it. And if you're playing the sport, um, the last thing you want to do is compound the situation by not having health care. And all of a sudden now you're, 
your medical bills are going through the roof, uh, whereas having health care really helps um, minimize the damage. Um, and you can sign up now. If you don't have insurance, you can actually sign up um, well, you know, for, for, for a plan that's you know, as, as, as few as $100 a month or less. Um, and so I think it's a very important initiative for us to be a part of, particularly, particularly in the sport that we do. Wait, the, so the president calls you and says, hey, I need your help, or how does this work? Yeah, <laughs> no, I got I got a call from from you know White House chief of staff, and you know we talked a lot about it, and um, we wanted to know if there's something I'd be interested in, you know, in helping out with. Um, but there's so many, so many young men out there who have not signed up yet, and um, yeah, you know, I think you know when you're young, you feel so invincible, and I've been there before. You feel like you're never going to get hurt. You feel like, you know, you feel like you're Superman, right? And um, and it's important to feel that way, but also, you know, when you do have knickknacks and you do have injuries, you want to make sure that you're covered. What's the what? Is there a website? Yeah, there's a website. It's healthcare.gov, and uh, you know, it's also important um, to know that you, know, you have until March 31st to sign up, and uh, you know, hopefully, um, everybody will get on board and start signing up now, and not wait to the last minute. Um, you know, just. Uh, Go handle your business, take care of it. Um, and the last thing you want to do is, you know, you 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 uh, break your ankle playing basketball, and all of a sudden you show up to the emergency room to get your ankle taken care of, and then you get handed with a seven thousand dollar bill. <laughs> That's making it worse. <laughs> it could Obama, President Obama, make your roster right now? Uh, yes, he could actually. <laughs> Uh, that, 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 that's not a, you know, I'm not, I'm not dissing the current roster that we have. It's more of a, a you know, a, a sign of respect of the skill that the president possesses. All right, wait a minute. Who does he remind you of in the NBA right now? Who does he remind me of in the NBA? Uh, Is he Derek God, Fisher? You no. Know, you know, that's a, that's, a, that's a good call. I, I think the form of his shot, you know, I haven't seen him really elevate on his shot, so I don't know if he does the leg <laughs> kick. Like the player I'm about to say, but you know, he would be like the left-handed version of like, uh, uh, like a Michael Adams. Michael Adams. Yeah, how about that one? Wow, that's that's going deep. Ugly shot, but yeah. man, he was fast. He could score. Yeah, yeah. So the kind of like you know, also you know, I think another name is probably I'd probably say Nate Archibald. Wow. Yeah, that, I think Nate Archibald is probably a better one. And he led the league in scoring and assist one year. Yeah, he did lead the league in scoring. I, I'm sure he, you know the president leads the you know the White House games and in scoring. scoring and I don't know about well. assists. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. I don't know if he's passing. I think he's shooting. <laughs> hey, uh, safe travels. Uh, good luck with the rehab, and uh, thanks for joining us. No, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right, and that's Kobe Bryant, Lakers guard. 